Port Royal for? Is it worth a buy? Let's read the words of the words of the developer. Set sail and join the colonial powers of Espana, England, Le France, 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 and the windmill shaggers in their fight for supremacy in the Caribbean in the 17th century. Before we get into the game, guys, uh, let's have a quick look at the graphical options. There's only about two or three, nothing to see here, but I do like the graphic art style of this game. It looks really nice, uh, especially zoomed out with the nice greeny blue seas and the sands and the, the greens of the trees. It just looks kind of nice. I, I quite like this kind of thing. And I just want to say as well, uh, a thanks to the developers for sending me a key uh, for this game. And I was quite excited to play this. I've never played a Port Royale game before. This is my first uh, venture. Uh, into the Port Royal series and um, I kind of regret not going in earlier because from what research I've done this is the worst of the games that's been released um, so it's kind of all of the people are saying this has been really dumbed down I can't confirm that because I've never played the others but my goodness this game is quite dumb as you'll find out the first thing I want to address though guys is the game is quite historically accurate um, it has uprisings that happen for example the, the, an Irish uprising happens uh, at the same time that it actually happened in history uh, John Hawkins the British uh, arse face is, is harassing Spanish convoys and all that as he did in, in history the countries are in the spots owning what they had in history the english the french spanish and the dutch and lots of things happened throughout the game that actually happened in history so people who say that this isn't historically accurate well you're wrong it, it is historically accurate and so are the ships everything is the characters the names it's historically accurate so why is it that they have airbrushed the entire slave trade out of this game i mean i find that quite bizarre i mean i understand why they've done it i mean you know i'm just saying and for me i find that far worse airbrushing stuff as bad as the slave trade out of history is really bad it's like oh let's just forget it even happened eh? let's forget about it oh let's just airbrush it. pretend it never happened but we all know it did happen you know taking it out of the game doesn't make history better it still happened the, the dutch the english the french the spanish every one of them brought in slaves from Africa into the Caribbean to work on their plantations. They were brought into the main ports and then sold off to the owners. And in this game, what you do is you have sailors and the free. So you go to, you go, it just totally screws with immersion. You just go to your main capital and a big shipment of sailors comes in and you grab as many as you want and then take them to your bases, your little ports, and they are then put to work sailors guys and another thing at the beginning of the game you have to select who you want to be well i wanted to be a pirate obviously so i was going to have long max silver um but i couldn't because the only pirate character is a woman yes that's right because obviously in the 17th century all pirates were women uh, even though it was unlucky to have a woman on a ship all pirates were women F off please what the hell so we had to go with um maqueta de boobies uh, who was historically a very good Spanish trader. So I decided to play the campaigns. There's a campaign for each nation. I started off with the Spanish. I did the, the tutorial, which lasts about an hour. And the Spanish campaign is about as difficult as doing this. <coughs> so that was the Spanish campaign. It took me about five or six hours. And it's about trade. Now, the complexities of trade, guys. I want you to clear your heads for this because... This gets complicated here. You've got all these commodities to trade in. You've got all these ports that your ships can go into. And you've got to make a convoy of trade ships and send them on a trade route. Now, most of you will never be able to get your heads around this, but I'll try my best to explain it. You press create a trade route, and then you just click on every fucking little town that you want. Just It doesn't matter. You don't care what's bought or sold there. Just click on the fuckers in a big circle following the wind, and a nice starting point and a nice stopping point, and then click on every fucking town and say auto, 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 confirm. Your ships will now sail around there, buying and selling, buying the cheap stuff, selling it high buying the cheap and selling it high and by the time they've done one lap of that they'll have made you a tidy sum so by the time they've done 10 laps of that you're rich 
So at this point, maybe set up another two or three trade routes around other places and then go watch a movie. Let the game play itself, guys, and make you lots of money. I got so much money that I just got bored having so much money. I was just sitting there, well, what do I do now? Oh, there's a pirate. Okay, I'll just go and commission a few ships to be built. War galleons, frigates and all of that. Oh, but I can't because I haven't got a captain. Ah, oh, okay. I'll hire a captain. <coughs> captain, take this convoy of ships out to sea and sink them pirates. Oh, I can't because I'm a noob captain. I can only command one ship. Uh, so you need levelling up. How do I do that? Oh, well, this is the fun part of the game where you have to actually do something. You look for little stars on the ports. Oh, what does that mean? Well, that means there's a job there for you. Okay. Oh, there's there's a star there. Oh, bring me some pottery. 25 pieces of pottery. So you look for somewhere that makes pottery, buy it, and deliver it. Well done. They need some meat over there. Okay. F***ing hell. So then you go and you buy some meat, you take it over there. Oh, look, there's something happening in the middle of the ocean. There's some There's some stuff just floating around. If you take a ship there, you can get it. Okay, I'll do that. Boring. Does it get exciting? No, that's it. Do that for a few hours, just till your captain gets levelled up, you know. Then you can take more ships out, and then you can have the big showdown with the pirate. So, two hours later, guys, I then eventually get a, a nice flotilla of warships, and I go and meet John Hawkins for the big showdown. At which point I'm presented with a little hexy grid. <laughs> where you take turns. <laughs> You take turns to fire your f***ing broadsides. And if you're really good, you get to fire both broadsides. If you can get your ship between two of their ships. Uh, you've got a couple of abilities you can use, but hey, hey, hey now, hey now, don't dream it's my... That's the combat in this game. All that for that. So it's back to the old watching your little trade routes go round and round and round and your money to come in. Oh, but no math, there's way more than that. You haven't even started to touch the tip, the tip, the tip of the iceberg, guys. Because you've got to go and do your city building. Oh, I love city builders. Man, you're not going to like this. Why not? Because it's shit. Oh, really? Yeah. What you do is, you see, guys, you go to your little town that you were given at the beginning and you build some little residencies and then you build some little businesses like tobaccos or cotton or, I don't know, sugar, wheat, you can look to see what goes with what. So maybe if you have cotton, you can build some, some weaving mills and then a tailor. And then you'll make little clothes. And then you sell the clothes and you produce them. And then you need to put more houses down because you're getting more slaves. I mean, sorry, sailors coming in. Uh, so you just have to keep expanding. But every time you expand your houses, you've got to put a hospital, a chapel and a tavern down. Okay, I can do that. That's fine. So you do that. You expand out, and that's that. You then buy another town, and you do the same thing on that one. Then you buy another town, then you do the same thing on that town. Or if you declare war, or they declare war on you, you can go and steal the enemy's towns and micromanage them. But why would I want to micromanage them? Because the micromanaging of the towns are so boring. They're so boring. I don't want towns. I don't want towns. And I'm not really doing the trading. The computer's doing that. So what am I doing? Well, you can go and find some treasure. Oh, can you? Oh yeah, there's little bits of treasure map hidden all over the game. Awesome, I like. I love treasure, I love treasure. Oh, all the gold bunions. Bunions? No, that's stuff on your feet, Mac. It's bullions. Well, it might be bunions, it might be gold rabbits. So you find bits of map and then you look on your map and you think, aha, I know where that is. So you send a ship there and then you get there expecting to jump off your ship with a shovel, but it says, no, you can't. Go and get the treasure unless you've got 10 jam tarts, 50 sailors, and 10 bottles of rum. Ah, okay. All right. So I'll just sail away. The <laughs> Go to Greg's. Hey, can I have 10 jam tarts, pal? What? What do you want, 10 jam tarts? Ah, oh, you're going on a treasure tr Ah, yeah, yeah. So you get your 10 jam tarts and your 10 bottles of rum, and you come back, and then you set off on an expedition that takes till the 21st f***ing century. Oh. Honestly, I could have made more f***ing gold that was in the f***ing chest in the time it took my slack. They were probably all just sitting there having a f***ing jam tart party. But eventually they did get to the treasure and I was like, oh yeah, what is it? What is it? No, we can't tell you. We can't tell you that because we've got to walk all the way f***ing back. What the f***? And then they get back. 
they get back guys and you know and I said what did you find a statue a fucking statue oh they'll be throwing that fucker in the river in 300 years I mean that guys this game this game this game it's not quite as bad as I'm making out to be it is tedious it is boring it is kind of a mobile game at times but I've got to admit as you get further and further in and you get a few countries at war and the, the French try to steal your, your bases uh, and your, your convoys is coming under a constant attack and you have to use a lot of the money you've got to build up big battle fleets. It can get fun. I have enjoyed defending my little bits of property, my fleets. I've, I've enjoyed attacking the French. I mean, why wouldn't you? It's just a shame the combat's boring and the micromanaging of your bases is very basic and boring. It's just a shame that the convoys, you don't really need to think about them. Um, I was kind of hoping that you, you would have to manually go around every little place and say, right, I want to buy this here, sell that there. I mean, you can manually tell your fleets what to buy, where and where to sell. But what's the point when you can just press a button and it'll do it all for you? And you know something, half the things don't work properly. I mean, I can't automate actual, the the workers, uh, the, you know, the, this, I can't automate that. And when you build a big warehouse on your island, I can't seem to automate that properly either. So it's, it feels kind of broken as well, but there is some good game in this. There is definitely uh, some good game to be had in this, but the vast majority of it just isn't good. And, um, I'm probably going to have a look at one of the earlier Port Royale games because I don't think this one's ever going to appeal to me, even though um, I did enjoy some of my time in the game. There's just not enough of it for £45.